Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to another episode of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this Xbox podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's Xbox gaming news, and we all learn an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on podcast services around the world, so please subscribe on your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xbox in 10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week were Breakfast, MXGP 2019, Control, Blair Witch, and The Dark Pictures Man of Medine. Games coming out this week are Children of Morta, Torchlight 2, Phoenix Point, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, WRC 8, The Sims 4 Machino Stuff Pack, Monochrome Order, Post War Dreams, River City Girls, Monster Hunter World Iceborne Master Edition, Creature in the Well, NBA 2K20, Restless Hero, Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and of course, Gears 5 on September 6th. Now on last week's biggest news stories, and we have 11 to cover this week. Number 1. New Games of Gold for September 2019. Dean Shima Bukuro at Xbox Wire announces, In September on Xbox One, take out your targets on a global stage in Hitman the Complete First Season, and then collaboration is the key to escaping in We Were Here. On Xbox 360 and Xbox One via backwards compatibility, save humanity once more in Earth Defense 2025, then unleash brutal combinations in Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Hitman the Complete First Season will be available for the entire month. We were here from September 16th to October 15th. Earth Defense Force 2025 from September 1st to the 15th. And Tekken Tag Tournament 2 available from September 16th to the 30th. Number 2. Halo the Master Chief Collection will eventually support over 6.6 million user maps. Stephanie Nunnally on VG247 writes, There will be over 6 million user created maps supported in Halo the Master Chief Collection. Over 6.6 million user generated maps have been successfully copied for Halo the Master Chief Collection according to 343 Industries. The user created maps were made for Halo 3, Halo Reach, and Halo 4. The current plan is to have each accessible one Halo Reach is added to the collection. According to an official blog post from July on Halo Waypoint, While the maps themselves will be brought over, videos and screenshots will not. The team was unable to find a workable solution in that regard. However, it still looks at ways to bring over screenshots to Halo Waypoint and make them viewable and downloadable. It's cool that 343 continues to add to this amazing collection of Halo games and bringing back some memories for all those longtime hardcore Halo players and users of Forge. Number 3. New Xbox Game Pass subscribers can now support their favorite Mixer partner. Sam Cork at True Achievements writes, Mixer have announced a new way for audience to support partners. Anyone who signs up to Xbox Game Pass, or upgrades to Ultimate, can pick a partner to support with a one-time donation and Mixer will pick up the bill. Mixer partners will get $3 compensation for every new Xbox Game Pass subscriber or upgrader who credits their channel with a code, i.e. the name of the Mixer partner's channel. For the first 30 days of their subscription, new members will have a support a creator option in their account menu. If they open up the Xbox beta app on PC or the Xbox Game Pass app on iOS or Android, the PC update has already started rolling out with the mobile app update arriving this week as well. And it's worth noting that this only applies to Mixer channels with partner status. With Ninja now streaming on Mixer and their continued support to make better community features for their streaming platform, Microsoft is not backing down to Twitch and continues to support. Competition is great in this market. Number 4. Leaked Resident Evil images show project teased by Capcom for Tokyo Game Show. Matt Perslow at IGN writes, Capcom is teaming a new Resident Evil project which will reveal at Tokyo Game Show this September. The tease comes in form of a website titled Project Resistance. The R and E in the title are shown in red, among other white letters making it fairly clear that the game is a Resident Evil title. The website explains that the teaser trailer for the new project will be shown on September 9th at 11am. Project Resistance will then be shown at Capcom's booth at Tokyo Game Show, in which gameplay is promised. The game will be on stage September 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. The website also includes logos for PS4, Xbox One, and Steam, suggesting that the game is in development for current generation hardware. An update to the story was added as Reddit user 5 Eye Samurai has discovered images from the Project Resistance trailer thanks to a YouTube thumbnail grabber tool which they used on the livestream URL. The images show a group of four people in civilian clothing which may potentially point to a four player co-op game, perhaps akin to the Resident Evil outbreak. And if you go to Nebelian on Twitter you can see some clear images of this leak. I'm torn on this leak. Resident Evil 2 is one of my three favorite games of all time, I love the franchise, but the fact that we didn't get a Resident Evil 3 remake leak or a tease for Resident Evil 8 is a little disappointing. Capcom has made some bad games with Resident Evil license, remember Umbrella Corpse? 
which I heard was so bad that I didn't even get a chance to play, but hopefully Capcom can win me over at the trailer. I remain optimistic. Number 5. Destiny 2's new seasonal content looks an awful lot like a battle pass. Amogen Beckling at Eurogamer writes, Yesterday Bungie dropped some pretty big news on how we'll be handling new seasons in Year 3 of Destiny 2. With four seasons planned in Year 3, each one will kick off with a new seasonal event, the first being Season of the Undying, which will begin with the events of the Shadowkeep expansion. Every player will be able to see how the universe of Destiny changes during each season, and at the end of it, its collective actions of all Destiny 2 players will cause the world state to change. However, those who purchase the Season Pass will have access to a quote seasonable match made activity, which allows them to get that extra level of sweet gear. With each new season in Destiny, we want players to feel like they, as a community, are contributing to Destiny's evolving world. Each season in Destiny has to ride the line between delivering self-contained season-long world arcs and making the handoff to the next season. Together, seasons move the Destiny universe forward, Bungie wrote in a post on its website. In regards to the new season's rewards, Bungie will add two new predictable reward pursuits in order to add more transparency while still letting players have their random roles. The first new addition in Season of the Undying is a seasonal artifact which every player will be able to get regardless of whether or not they buy a season pass. This artifact will level up unlocking armor 2.0 mods and increasing your guardian's power level as you earn XP through playing. These artifacts will go away at the end of a season, so in the next one you will get a brand new artifact and mods to play with. Cool artifact powers add directly to your overall power and is account wide, Bungie writes. We are both excited and a little terrified to see how players will manage to raise their artifact power during the season. And then there's the season pass itself, which does look an awful lot like a battle pass. There will be 100 ranks to earn each season with both free and premium rewards, and each new season pass will cost $10 if you want to access those premium rewards. As long as Bungie outlines good rewards with their season, I'm not against battle passes, as long as they treat the customer and the community right. It is a business, and Destiny now being independent needs to find a way to continue to make money as they're not announcing and releasing a new Destiny 3. Number 6. A remaster of Disney's classic Lion King and Aladdin games is coming in the fall. Mike Fahe at Kotaku right? Coming this fall to consoles and PC, Disney classic games Aladdin and The Lion King combine two of the best movie tie-in games ever in one HD upscaled bundle. The package includes Sega Genesis and Game Boy releases of both games, as well as the Super Nintendo version of The Lion King, along with special features to make games easier to play for today's delicate young flowers. Disney classic games Aladdin and The Lion King, put together by Nighthawk Interactive and Digital Eclipse, is basically an extension of the excellent Disney Afternoon Collection. The different versions of each game can be tweaked with a variety of visual enhancements and customizable controls, cheat codes and a rewind feature help players make it through the tough spots, an interactive museum filled with concept art and music rounds out the $29.99 package. I remember playing Aladdin on the Sega Genesis, but to all you Disney fans out there, I've never actually seen the movie. Shame me. Number 7. Telltale Games is being revived as a new company with the rights to The Wolf Among Us and Batman. Adam Bankhurst at IGN writes, Telltale Games is being revived as a new company following the purchase of all of its assets, including the back catalog rights to its licensed properties The Wolf Among Us and Batman by LCG Entertainment. As reported by Polygon, this new Telltale Games is being run by James Audley and Brian Waddle. Audley was the founder and CEO of Galaxy Pest Control, which worked with such licensed properties such as Duck Dynasty and Power Rangers, while Waddle had previously ran sales and marketing for the Havoc Games engine. Audley confirmed that some workers from the original Telltale games will be offered freelance roles, with full-time positions possible in the future. In addition to The Wolf Among Us, which was scheduled to get a sequel, and Batman, the new Telltale also has full rights to original Telltale games like Puzzle Agent. In addition, Audley confirmed that there are some other expired licenses that we're looking at. While Audley said that it's possible the new Telltale will pick up some new stories where they left off, they are still evaluating how they will handle each property going forward. There is some controversy about this. All the news outlets are saying Telltale Games is being revived, however, not all the former employees are getting their jobs back, which is disappointing. Thus, it is really just the Telltale Games brand being revived. I've played a number of Telltale Games in the past and have enjoyed my time with them. The first Walking Dead season was the first game to almost make me cry in a video game, extremely emotionally impactful for those who finished it. Number 8, an Apex Legend leak at GameStop gives the first possible look at crypto. Heidi Nicholas at True Achievements writes, The trailer for Season 2 of Apex Legends showed a mysterious character destroying the Repulsor Tower with an EMP, consequently luring in leviathans and swarms of flyers. Following on the news that the Lion King and Aladdin games might be getting remastered, this latest leak from GameStop seems to confirm crypto as the character. PC Gamer noted these posts from Reddit user Taves3D, who uploaded the three screenshots. The character soon to be Crypto looks quite altered compared to the first apparent leak of his character, but both wear the same green and white jacket, the very same jacket it seems as worn by the hacker who blew up the Repulsor Tower. The laptop Crypto used has also been left in the game as a tease. A picture of a weapon named the Charge Rifle was also uploaded to Reddit. There's no hint yet as how it works, but it definitely looks heavy duty. The last screenshot shows a cosmetic skin seemingly modeling after Frankenstein's monster, and it looks as though it's intended for Gibraltar. This will apply what many fans have been hoping for, a Halloween event is on the way. 
More fun seasonal content assumingly on the way with a new character for all you hardcore Apex Legend players out there. Number 9, Star Wars Battlefront 2 loot box controversy, quote we hit rock bottom EA DICE says. Matt Kim at IGN writes, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is almost 2 years old but the developers at EA DICE are finally moving on from the loot box controversy that dogged the first year of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Quote, we hit rock bottom in terms of player sentiment, but now it's climbing every month. Battlefront 2 design director Dennis Braunval said in a new interview with GameIndustry.biz, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was supposed to be EA DICE's definitive take on the Battlefront series, which EA inherited from Pandemic Studios. Unfortunately, the decision to include loot boxes that potentially allowed players to earn powerful upgrades, which players said were pay to win, severely harmed the type for the game ahead of its launch. EA DICE removed loot boxes from the game 24 hours before launch. Battlefront 2 loot box controversy grew beyond the game and brought the ethical and legal efficacies of loot boxes into the mainstream discussion. Not a week goes by without us thinking, imagine if we hadn't launched the loot boxes the way we did, Braunoval said. I was extremely hyped for not only the campaign but the multiplayer in Battlefront 2. The campaign was slightly disappointing, it was fine, and the multiplayer, bogged down by these loot boxes, completely turned me off to the game and I never went back. So disappointing. Number 10, Modern Warfare 2's controversial no Russian mission divided Infinity Ward. Richard Wakeling at GameSpot writes, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 took the go big or go home approach to sequel design despite all of its bombastic over the top action and world ending state. However the one scene that stuck with most people and drummed up plenty of media coverage in the process was the now infamous no Russian mission. In the early campaign level players control undercover CIA agent Joseph Allen as he attempts to infiltrate a Russian terrorist cell. Unfortunately part of blending in with the villainous group means joining them as they shoot up an airport full of innocent civilians. You can choose to gun down the fleeing crowds of people yourself or sit back and watch it unfold. Either way, playing through the scene is unsettling and uncomfortable, especially considering the sheer number of mass shootings that occur every year. Fans and critics alike have always questioned whether the scene was necessary to tell Modern Warfare 2's story, and this division existed within developer Infinity Ward 2. No Russian polarized the studio, art leader Joe Emsley says in an interview with Game Informer. There was a side of the studio that felt like it should be played from the perspective of a security guard that got caught up in it, then there was the other side that liked the way it was going. I remember doing all the civilians for No Russian, and I just wouldn't. There was a point in time where we were discussing how gory we would get with the people who were getting hit. I pulled back and said, you don't need it. People are getting tagged, and their squibs are going off, it's all good. I just wanted to touch on this story as Modern Warfare 2 is one of the most important games in my video game memories and I do remember all the controversy around it, I imagine everyone does who played this game. So it's interesting to hear that it wasn't just the media that was divided on it, it was actually the developers inside Infinity Ward as well. And number 11, Cuphead releases official sheet music and invites school bands to learn, Alicia Judge at IGN Wright. The studio behind indie sensation Cuphead has released official sheet music for the game's jazzy soundtrack. Available here, prices range from a couple dollars for the barbershop quartet, arrangements of Don't Deal With The Devil, and a quick break, to 50 $50 for the scores and parts to 7 tunes at professional standard. Each music pack contains the sheet music in PDF form. A short bonus story I wanted to add on to this already long episode, but I really love Cuphead, the music, and everything they've done with that game. As always, we end each episode with a fun fact about Xbox, and this week it's about Gears of War. Given Gears 5 is coming out this week, let's learn a little bit about why the Gears characters are so over the top. Luke Luby on The Gamer writes, The characters throughout Gears of War are well known for being over the top when it comes to their size. Marcus, Dom, and company are some of the biggest men you'll see in any video game, even without their bulky armor. However, it wasn't always planned that way. Cliff Blazinski explained on Twitter that he never asked for the characters to be extremely fit and all-around huge. According to Blazinski, it seems that their size was determined when he wasn't at the studio. Two exceptions to this, though, are Arya Stroud and Chairman Prescott, and Blazinski managed to get at least some input on the design of at least one of them. Explaining his input, the lead designer said, Anya originally had huge boobs, but I pushed back on Pete to make her less cartoony, ironic considering the guys. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox and 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast service, leave a review, share it with your friends, and follow on all social media at Xbox and 10. This past week, I have not had any time to play the games I wanted to on Xbox, but I had some friends over, we played some Burial Kart, Smash Brothers, and Jackbox. Always a good time. My name is Brandon Rosa. You can follow me on Xbox at Brosa93. I hope you all have a great week and keep on gaming.